each and all. Little things in the field, yon red-cloaked clown, of thee from the hilltop looking down, the heifer that lows in the upland farm, far heard, lows not thine ear to charm. The sexton, tolling his bell at noon, deems not that great Napoleon stops his horse, and lists with delight, whilst his files sweep round yon alpine height. Nor knowest thou what argument thy life to thy neighbour's creed has lent. All are needed by each one. Nothing is fair or good alone. I thought the sparrow's note from heaven, singing at dawn on the alder bough. I brought him home in his nest at even. He sings the song, but it pleases not now. For I did not bring home the river and sky. He sang to my ear, they sang to my eye. The delicate shells lay on the shore, the bubbles of the latest wave fresh pearls to the enamel gave, and the bellowing of the savage sea greeted their safe escape to me. I wiped away the weeds and foam, I fetched my sea-born treasures home, but the poor, unsightly, noisome things had left their beauty on the shore, with the sun, and the sand, and the wild uproar. The lover watched his graceful maid, as mid the virgin train she stayed, nor knew her beauty's best attire was woven still by the snow-white choir. At last she came to his hermitage, like the bird from the woodlands to the cage. The gay enchantment was undone, a gentle wife, but fairy none. Then I said, I covet truth. Beauty is unripe childhood's cheat. I leave it behind with the games of youth. As I spoke, beneath my feet the ground pine swirled its pretty wreath, running over the club moss burrs. I inhaled the violet's breath. Around me stood the oaks and firs. Pine cones and acorns lay on the ground. Over me soared the eternal sky, full of light and of deity. Again I saw, again I heard, the rolling river, the morning bird. Beauty through my senses stole. I yielded myself to the perfect whole. Fate, that you are fair or wise, is vain, or strong or rich or generous. You must have also the untaught strain that sheds beauty on the rose. There is a melody, born of melody, which melts the world into a sea. Toil could never compass it. Art, its height, could never hit. It came never out of wit. But a music, music born, may well Jove and Juno scorn. Thy beauty, if it lack the fire which drives me mad with sweet desire, what boots it? What the soldier's mail, unless he conquer and prevail? What all the goods thy pride which lift, if thou pine for another's gift? Alas, that one is born in blight, a victim of perpetual slight. When thou lookest on his face, thy heart saith, Brother, go thy ways. None shall ask thee what thou doest, or care a rush for what thou knowest, or listen when thou repliest, or remember where thou liest, or how thy supper is sodden. And another is born to make the sun forgotten. Surely he carries a talisman under his tongue. Broad are his shoulders, and strong, and his eye is scornful, threatening, and young. I hold it of little matter whether your jewel be of pure water, a rose diamond, or a white, but whether it dazzles me with light. I care not how you are dressed, in the coarsest or in the best, nor whether your name is base or brave, nor for the fashion of your behaviour, but whether you charm me, bid my bread feed and my fire warm me, and dress up nature in your favour. One thing is forever good, that one thing is success, dear to the humidities and to all the heavenly brood. Who bides at home, looks abroad, carries the eagles, and masters the soul.